So networking, connecting in a virtual era. Um, today's goals that I really hope we can accomplish is that well, one, that you can walk away learning the value of networking if you're not bought into it yet that we'll, you'll be able to leave with some strong networking strategies and also that you'll be able to learn how to, to network appropriately um, and what that, what that means and, and looks like. When we're talking about networking, one book that I recently came across is called um, Build Your Dream Network. And in there, the author talks about the three P's of networking, which is pretty simple. It's people, people, and more people. Um, and that if, if networking seems daunting to you or overwhelming, just remembering that it's all about the people. And maybe that won't um, shy you away too much, but it's just people connecting with other people. And if we look at what networking is defined, when we look at networking, networking is the action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional or social contacts. But if we break networking down even more simply as to just the net, well that, I am a very, I'm a visual person. Um, I like analogies. And so for me personally, I really like the picture that comes from net, which is this, you know, a length of open mesh material made of twine, cord, rope, or something similar. Um, a structure consisting of a net supported on a frame. And through our networking with our people, that's what we're doing. We're trying to build a, a support system, if you will, um, with the people who we're connecting with. So what is networking? You know, we've got the official definition, right? But if we could break it down into three things. Well, one, networking is essential and continual activity. This is not a one and done type thing. So it's not like, whoop, you know, check off the box, I networked. This is something that you're continuing to have to do. It's also an activity where you control the effort, but you don't control the results. So you could absolutely go all in with networking and choose to try to connect to, let's say you make an outreach of 10 or even 20 people trying to connect with them. You can only do the one side. You, the amount of effort that you put in is, is not going to necessarily determine the results. And so with that though, it kind of goes back to that essential and continual activity. And the third piece is it's everywhere. Networking is everywhere in the sense of, yes, it can be in a formal setting such as a career fair or an information or a tech talk or a professional development workshop like we're on today. It can also be as simple as a coworker or a classmate who you're doing a project with and connecting and networking with those people as well. So it, the opportunity to connect if we, you know, it is everywhere. The reason why a few stats of why you want to invest in networking, um, and these numbers honestly are probably constantly changing. One is that 70% of jobs are not advertised publicly. So while we certainly are encouraging you to be on job boards, to be um, actively engaged in Handshake or even on the Research Park website and seeing what opportunities are presented there, there are a lot of opportunities that, is, that also come up that are not going, that are not through, um, that, are, that are not necessarily posted publicly, but that they're heard of. Companies typically receive six times the applications as people working in the company. And so if we have an inside connection, someone who we already know who's aware that we're applying or is able to provide, serve as a reference for us, that is something else that can be a huge um, bonus. Brief interruption, Lauren. Um, yeah. Are your slides supposed to be going right now? They are. Oh, they aren't moving for the audience, I don't mm. think. Interesting. Okay. Well, just a moment. Let's see what we can do then. I think it'd be more fun for the audience if we could actually, if you could see, if you could see what I see. Let's see. Let's try again. Talk to me, Annie. What so what slide do you see? Why invest in networking? Okay, and if I move forward, what do you see now? Yes, uh, another are, slide. Are we moving? <laughs> yes. Hooray! Okay, so really you didn't miss much. We talked about people, people, people. We talked about networking and then the net and the visual and how I'm a visual person, so we said all that. You heard everything I was saying. 
Um, then, and I can also share these slides with you later if you guys want to have a copy of them. Just, let, just reach out and I can share them so that if we missed more, you're good. We've also got, again, like we talked about, this is ongoing. This is not something that you check the box from. It's something that you'll continue to do even when you get the job, even as you're, you know, continuing to, whether you're moving up positions or staying in one position, the networking is something you'll consistently do. We talked about, I think this was the last one we were on, was that the, the number of jobs that are not advertised publicly is, is significant. Companies are receiving more applications than even people who are working in their companies. And then again, 40% of new hires were referred to their current job, which kind of goes back to that first bullet point of the 70% of jobs not advertised, right? So they're able, and again, the connection piece. If I'm, an, if I'm a recruiter and I hear from someone who's already in my company, hey, I know this person, they're really good and they're willing to vouch for you or serve as a reference, that can be helpful through the screening process. Of course, there are concerns about networking, um, and here are just a few of them that people often will state. Either, you know, you said networking is all about people, 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 and well, I'm just not a people person. Um, so that can be one. It can be uncomfortable or feel weird. I think that especially in this era right now, it can, it, you kind of probably go on one side or the other, either the fact that many of our networking pieces now are virtual, you either feel really good about that because you feel more comfortable behind the screen, or it's another layer of being on, still either be that it's confusing or it's awkward and you're not quite sure how to do it. And we'll talk about ways that you can be actively, um, that hopefully will make you more comfortable about those. Now, the good news also is networking is a skill. And when we're talking about skills, those are things that can be developed. And so with that, you might go through your first, let's just say networking event, and you might stumble and trip a lot. And the good news is that that's okay. You can get back up. You can try it again. And the more you practice this skill, as with most things, the better you're going to be. Most of us don't just get on a bike, a two-wheeled bike specifically, and just start riding it, right? Whether you were young when you started to learn how to ride a bike, or even as you're older and you're trying to learn how to ride a bike, there's a few places where we might stumble and fall and, and that's okay. We need to continue to keep practicing so that we can continue to develop the skill. Now, I've talked about a few of these already, but there are ways that you can find your networking opportunities. So one of them certainly is to sign up for departmental or office newsletters. So it might be that, of course, if you're, a, with, if you're currently a college student, not only being engaged with, your, with the college, but also signing up with your departments. This could also include any RSOs that you're currently affiliated with, paying attention to what the newsletters are being shared, and also from an office perspective, making sure that you're not only receiving both of these things, but that you're reading through them. Because there are often times where people are posting upcoming events, and certainly Research Park does a great job, I think, of providing a variety of ways for you to be able to connect. Handshake events, of course, is another tool that you can use. We will be having a, a career fair this fall, um, an engineering career fair. It's open to all students, and that is going to be September 9, 10, and 11. It will be virtual this year just because the sheer size of our events, it is not yet safe for us to hold that. If you've been, if you've attended an event in the past, particularly an engineering career fair, we typically have hundreds of employers and thousands of students, and we're just not quite there yet from a numbers game and safety. So we will be moving that virtually as the majority of campus, as far as for any large event, will need to be doing so as well. You can be looking for flyers on campus, and by campus I mean, of course, yes, U of I campus, but even Research Park campus. Many people are still using those paper flyers to be able to share what's coming or events that are happening. So paying attention to those, you know, we have things at our fingertips these days. So being able to quickly just grab a picture of something just so that you can remember where it was or when was it happening can be helpful. Looking for information sessions or tech talks, also LinkedIn Learning. These are huge tools and resources that would allow you to potentially connect with others. Um, and even, even honestly, tech talks or that have happened in the past, to be able to, if you're watching something and you're feeling like this was amazing and valuable and I really like the person who shared this, 
to be able to then reach out to them via LinkedIn and say in that note section, like, I recently watched a tech talk that you hosted and I found it really valuable. This is an industry I'm interested in going into and I would love to connect. So I'm getting a little bit of ahead of myself as I'm starting to already talk about LinkedIn. That's also one tool that you wanna make sure that you're not just randomly hitting the connect button and not giving the person on the other side any point of reference as to why you're connecting. Treat every event as a networking opportunity. My guess is that while there are going to be course classes this fall that are coming in as a virtual course now, there might still be speakers who are, and maybe even um, a broader range of speakers who are going to be able to connect with your class this semester due to the fact that it is remote. So they wouldn't necessarily have to travel. They'll be able to work it into their schedule. And again, with that, making sure that you are engaged and listening and then connecting. Friends, there is fortune in follow-up. And that follow-up can begin by simply sending either a, mes a message to connect and also then that thank you that they shared their time with you. Again, talking to your friends, colleagues, and mentors is important as well. Not everything has to be super formal. Sometimes it's just the moment of connection. And, and we'll talk about um, some easy ways that you can be doing that as well in a few moments. So the guidelines for networking, it does require time and energy. Um, it is something that you have to kind of work into your day or block time for. Um, and while it can't, as far as for it to be successful. And then you also need to make sure that you're taking initiative. You've got to do the work. So meaning, as the example that I just shared, if you watch the tech talk or if you're, if you're in the class um, presentation and you hear and, and the person was great, taking the initiative to follow up is what could potentially lead to a, a successful contact. Your strategy should correspond to the setting um, and that can even be just reminding them of where you're coming from. And then when we're setting up a, um, a networking event or when we're doing, we want our appearance to be professional. So it doesn't have to be that you're in a suit and tie, but it can be that you are, that you're going to be, you want to be, um, you want to make sure that you are professional in what, like not just in a, in a ratty t-shirt, for example. Um, but that we want to be engaged and ready and ready to talk. You also want to be respectful and appreciative of people's times when you're networking. Networking doesn't always have to take a long time. For some, it could be that you're just reaching out and saying, hey, do you have 15 to 20 minutes that we could share? I was looking on LinkedIn. I saw that you're, I was looking up some company information and, and did a deeper dive to see what alumni were there, found you, and I was just wondering if you could, if you'd be willing to share 15 minutes of your day so I could hear more about your story, how you got to where you are and, and what you like best, as it's a direction I think I want to go. So those are some things we want to be respectful of. And then, of course, when they do say yes, and you're able to connect with them, making sure that it's, that you haven't just taken an hour of their time, but that you've been, um, that you've been respectful of the time commitment that you asked of them. Things to avoid in network converse, networking conversations. Um, one thing I mentioned, of course, is taking up too much of the conversational space, or taking, um, and not and so not only too much time as far as I asked for 15 minutes, and now we're at 45. Unless, of course, they're the one leading it, and then I think that that can be okay. But also that you're not the only one talking. Um, really, in networking, we want to not necessarily be telling them all about me we want to be sharing with, we want to be asking them questions. And we'll talk about, um, if you haven't heard of what an informational interview is yet, we'll talk more about that coming soon. Networking is also not the place or platform where we ask for a job. So if I'm connecting with people, I'm building a relationship. I am not saying, oh yeah, by the way, do you have a, do you have a are you guys hiring, do you have a job? I'm looking for, you know, I'm looking for full time or I'm looking for an internship. Are you guys doing anything like that? So we don't want to be aggressive about it. Now we can absolutely reference it. This is the direction I'm hoping to go or I plan to apply. I'm watching for positions that are opening for your company. Um, I'm looking here. Is that the best place to look? But we're not going to ask that person for the job. We certainly also don't want to talk badly about other companies. 
Um, through LinkedIn, we might be able to have a storyline of where this person has been, but you never know either where if that person has worked for the company you're speaking badly of, or if they're plan if that's maybe one of their goals um, for their professional career of where they'd like to go. So we don't want to ever talk badly about other companies, and honestly, the negative talk shouldn't be about other people either. And finally, one thing to avoid is to not listen. So often people are listening to respond to the conversation that they're not listening to hear. And so making, a, making it a point to be intentional about really listening to the person, not necessarily looking at what the next question was on your sheet to ask them, but to think about, okay, well, yeah, you know, you said this. And so I have, what about, you know, building the conversation based on what they're sharing with you. One strategy to do is to develop a nap. And no, it doesn't mean we get to go and, and take one, though it might feel like a nice idea right about now. Um, instead, it's a networking action plan. So think about what you're trying to accomplish by networking. And I think that this is another layer that's interesting that sometimes we forget. Networking doesn't always have to be about getting a job, though it can often be the bridge that helps us connect to get to one or the net, right? But networking allows us to do career research. It allows us to um, build on professional development. It can, it can certainly, of course, help us in the job search, but it's going to be, it can be an opportunity for exploration. Maybe, uh, right, you might be in a place right now where you're like, I'll take any job because you don't know yet what you want to do and networking can help you break that down or maybe there are so many opportunities or different areas that you could potentially go into that it's overwhelming networking again can be that place where you can be saying you know i think i'm i think i have an idea of what direction i'd like to go in but i'd like to learn more about what are you doing and and building it that network that way you also wanna think about what's the best way for you to meet your networking goal. So if we're thinking that it is a job search, it could be that your best networking goal is to make sure that you're aware of all of your department events that are happening on campus or virtually, as well as career fairs that are coming. So for CS, there's after hours that, typically, that, happens, that will happen virtually before the career fair. And then of course, there's also the engineering career fair that's gonna be, again, September 9, 10, and 11. So making sure that those are must-have events or must-attend events that you're going to be participating in because your, your goal is to get that internship or full-time offer. For others, it might be, I really want to come back to, maybe it's I really wanna come back to Research Park. I would love to have another opportunity to continue interning with my company or another. And so your networking goal might be to stay connected with the manager um, and team that you've been connected with this summer. So making sure that you're reaching out. And if you're thinking you'd like to talk to someone else, then using the network you already have established from what you're doing this summer to asking them or, you know, or reaching out to others who you've met along the way this summer. Also then again, what do you need to do? What do you need? And also what do you need to do in order to meet those goals? So thinking in terms of, am I gonna need an elevator pitch? Do I have an elevator pitch? Have I practiced my elevator pitch? Um, should I be researching some people on LinkedIn? Would that be helpful? Or do I need to look at the research park directory and see what other companies are, are out there that maybe um, I would be interested in and then starting to build that, that action plan of who to contact? Now, we are going to spend a little bit of time on informational interviewing because that is as very, it is an excellent way to connect with others, specifically those who, you know, who maybe are not part of your warm market. So your warm market, I would call anyone who you already know, it could be potential, it could be family or friends, it could be coworkers who you're working with right now, who like they know who you are, it could be your um, it could be classmates who you're with, especially as everyone is coming back for the fall. Any classmate who had a different experience as you and maybe they worked with a company who you think you might be interested in, they absolutely could be a great um, person either to have an informational interview with, but who I would also call your warm market. Your colder market, of course, could be LinkedIn, 
LinkedIn is a place then where I may not necessarily know them, but I can still reach out to them. And regardless of your market, the informational interview is a great place when we're trying to gather some information. It's focused on collecting information. We can hear, we want to, this should be something that is scheduled. It's an opportunity to learn, network, research, but honestly, if informational interview kind of makes you panic, it's just a conversation. We're just setting up a time, and maybe it's even over Zoom, where I'm gonna connect with you, and I, I'm gonna ask you some questions. Now, the thing about the informational interview, the reasons, several of reasons why they're valuable, is it's, it can be low pressure. Again, it's a conversation. It is, again, that opportunity to collect information, you get to question that your question, you're tailoring the questions to your specific interest. So maybe if you're meeting with a, with a classmate who had a different internship experience than you, maybe you're saying, hey, would you, could we set, you know, 15, I'd love to hear your story from the summer. What did you do? What projects were you working on? What was the culture like within the company? Um, they're one of my target companies and I'd love your perspective because you were just there. So, you know, how, you, can, you can tailor those questions. Obviously, it allows you to build your network. So connecting with those people in the professional space of LinkedIn, your classmates would be appropriate at this point. Learn about what successful people did to be successful. So planning your next steps. Again, if someone just came back from an internship that was that target company for you, asking them, you know, what did you do that you feel like really helped you be successful? What was the interview process like? What were the types of questions they were asking? What was your biggest takeaway from the summer? Those are some great things to be asking. And then if we're talking about, again, just a colleague or a um, person who's working with the company who you're interested in, asking about specific roles. It, it can be something where you can say, here's, I, in my classes, I'm loving this. I would, you know, and, and based on what I think you're doing, I think those could apply. Can you tell me more specifically about your role or similar roles within your organization. Someone who's working within their company probably has a pretty good idea of that um, that can help you learn it without either one having to invest time in those roles yourself and also then might help you eliminate certain roles that you're like, oh, that's not what I thought it was. So that's, that's not what I'm interested in. Requesting an informational interview. Certainly this is going to be more about um, this can apply both to your warm and cold market, um, so, but especially when we're talking about LinkedIn or um, anyone who you're connecting with from Research Park that maybe they don't know you, introducing yourself as a student from Illinois is important and allows them a, a point of connection. We'll talk about how you can drill down on LinkedIn as well in a few moments to see the alumni, so you can also be intentional about connecting with alumni that helps bridge the gap of like, why do I want to connect with you from their side? Once they see that you're from Illinois, that immediately is a connection. Like, oh, they're, you know, and, and brings that and can be an opportunity where often people like to help people. Let them know what you're interested in learning more about and what they do. And of course, then we want to be appreciative of their time. And then asking, you know, do you have 15 to maybe 20 or 30 minutes to talk about their job and their career path? So this is an opportunity, again, where they are sharing their story. Your story certainly might be intertwined in the conversation, but this is, this is an informational interview where you are gathering information that can potentially help you through whatever that goal is that you had set. Example questions. So you are in control of the informational interview. Your job is to own that conversation. So you, what you don't want to have happen is that you get on the call and you're like, hey, hi, how's it going? So, you know, how, how, how are you? And then you just don't know where to go. You do want to have some questions prepared ahead of time that can of course be written down that you can then be asking. Maybe it is. What do you like about this position? I, I've seen you've been in this position for a while now. What do you like about it? What are, what are you working on currently? So what types of projects? What's the work culture like at your office? 
Um, certainly, you, you can read through some of the others. What's one thing you wish you would have known before taking the job? If you could change anything about your position, what would it be? Or if, especially if you are currently in that full-time role seeking, it might be a good question to ask. What factors did you evaluate before you accepted the job? So that can help to prompt you of maybe if you're not sure what those should be, might give you some suggestions on what to be considering. Now LinkedIn, um, we recently ECS over the summer and we'll be hosting um, again in a few weeks. LinkedIn came and did a presentation for us on kind of like how to rock your LinkedIn profile. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly encourage you to create one. Engineering Career Services does do LinkedIn reviews. So if you are connected with ECS, that is something that you would be able to um, connect with. But you can also, if you're um, a professional in the field already, certainly there's lots of tools, even through Google, that talk about what makes a strong LinkedIn um, resume or not LinkedIn resume profile. Certainly a few things you wanna make sure that you're considering. So one, you wanna make sure that you're, you have a professional profile picture. This does not need to be a professional headshot, but it should be something that includes you. This is a professional, um, professional account, so we don't want it to be a group shot with you and your friends, but instead you, but any honestly relatively Simple background is fine. It doesn't even have to be one color. It could be brick, a brick background or a stone background, but we want the main focus of that image to be you. Make sure that your about section is updated. Explain your experiences and projects. Um, skills and endorsements are important. And LinkedIn, a gem of LinkedIn is to follow companies you're interested in. So don't just use it as a tool to be networking with people use it as a tool to network with companies. You will start to see that the companies then of course will um, fill your feed. So you'll start to get more notifications about the companies who you're interested in. And on the back end, recruiters are able to see what students are already following them. So it's a great tool for them as they're trying to limit the number of students perhaps or candidates that they're looking through for them to also hit that who's already following me button and make sure that you're included in that. The other thing you wanna make sure that you're doing because so often we lock down all the things when it comes to social media is to double check your profile visibility settings. If it's marked to private, they're not gonna be able to see you or find you. And so making sure that you're just double checking those. A few of the stats that were shared through the LinkedIn presentation that I attended um, earlier in the summer that I think are some important stats to share with you today include some of the following. So one, Make sure that the University of Illinois is listed. Um, make sure that you have that listed because members who list a school get 10 times more views on average. Profiles with a photo get 21 times more views on average. So take a moment to, to get that picture uploaded and make sure it's a, more, it's a recent image. Um, profiles with two or more positions are 36 times more likely to be found by recruiters. And I also want you to, if you look to that next number of the 41%, hiring managers consider volunteer experience equally as valuable as paid work experience. So that I would also encourage you as you're trying to decide what you're adding to that LinkedIn page, that project experiences from even coursework could be valuable. And then of course too, to consider from your experiences so far and what you've learned over the summer, what skills should you be adding? because you'll get up to 17 times more profile views if you, have, if you have a list of five or more skills. So I think those are some pretty strong numbers to again encourage you to maybe make some updates, get that photo added if you don't have one yet, and making sure that you are, um, that you're sh sharing your stories well. LinkedIn's great too, of course, because it doesn't have a page limit, whereas our resume, of course, is limited to a page. We don't have that real estate confinement on LinkedIn, so you can be sharing all the things that you've been connect that you've been doing. And again, if you are struggling with what do I put where, or does this work or fit, then again, ECS is here to help. Um, specifically from that, if you're connected with our office, and I'm sure um, for students, the Career Center on campus, if you're not in engineering, would also be a great resource for you. For tips for messaging on LinkedIn. Certainly we wanna make sure that your profile is up to date before you do that. So 
we don't want to start reaching out to people and then go back and update our profile. Um, you want to do the work ahead of time to make it updated from the work that you've been doing this summer as well. And, um, and so doing that first, so that then as you start reaching out, if someone decides to check your profile out, that it's the newest version of you that they're seeing. Again, making sure that you tell them that you're a student, tell them why you're contacting them. Um, just that friendly reminder, this is link, the, the messaging is not to say, hey, I'm looking for an internship, so I'm reaching out to you. Um, they're gonna expect that you've been able to do some homework yourself to know how to find those positions. And then give them a question to respond to. So it could be, you know, if, if you've built it, if you've started, if you're saying something along the lines of, I'm really interested in this industry, can you tell me what you think it takes to be sex, successful in your job? Or it might be, I see that you, it's based on your, pro, based on your profile, it seems like you have a, a similar career path that I would like to follow or emulate. And I'm wondering if we could set up if you have time where we could connect for 15 minutes for me to hear more. So asking that question can sometimes then prompt a response. Keep in mind also, and this is a sample message that I'll read through in a moment, but keep in mind also that this goes back to one of the very first slides I shared that maybe you saw or maybe you didn't based on the tech difficulties we experienced, but that your effort does not equal results. So messaging 20 people on LinkedIn doesn't equal 20 responses. And so, and that can also be, that doesn't reflect anything on you. Some people are actively engaged on their LinkedIn and some are not. And so there could be some people who are, who once upon a time created a LinkedIn page who just aren't actively monitoring it right now. And so they aren't even aware that you're trying to connect or that you've sent a message. So keeping that in mind and don't be, and really, I suppose, encouraging you to not be too discouraged if you're not getting the massive results that you were hoping for, but to continue to take massive action as you're reaching out to people so that you can be getting results. So here, this is a sample message you might include. This is says, Dear Mr. Kidd, my name is Amy Johnson and I'm a sophomore studying computer science at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. I'm interested in learning more about the integration of artificial intelligence in the automotive industry. I saw your profile on LinkedIn and I was wondering if it could be possible to schedule a 15 to 30 minute phone conversation to learn more about your work. Thank you for your time and consideration. So that is the message that you could send and then you could also try to connect with them as well. Another place, if you, so some of, that, some of you may already have a strong network built or you have a strong starting point and there might be others of you who are feeling like, I don't know anyone or even the office that I'm affiliated with, there's really just three of us and I don't feel like I have a network yet. Well, then two things. One, I'm gonna encourage you as I often do with students to add the word yet. I don't have a strong network yet we can absolutely take action to begin building one. And one of the ways you can do that is by going to, for example, on LinkedIn, if you search University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and go to the alumni tab, you are then able to look based on either where they live, so if location is of value to you, where they work, if you already know companies that you're looking for, you can also look by based on what they do so if there's a particular industry that you already know you're con that you're interested in, this can be a great search tool to continue to dive deeper in. And also what they studied. So if you're like, well, I'm a computer science major, but I don't know what, what people go into. There's over 18,000 people. Or I'm in econ or business admin. You can see the numbers are strong. And this was just a quick screenshot of some things that I was able to find. So. Again, this is a great tool for you to be to have access to. I am curious, um, based on who's on the call, how many of you are um, engineering students? You can give me maybe a thumbs up. I wonder if I can see that.
Well, one tool for specifically for engineering students is Granger Mentoring. Granger Mentoring is um, relatively new to the college, but it allows, it is another place where you can connect and the advantage, and so while LinkedIn is a great tool, Granger Mentoring is also great that I would encourage you to connect with because those are alumni who have opted into Granger Mentoring who are looking to connect with current students. So that would be something else that I would strongly encourage you to be um, connecting with if you haven't done so. And I will look to see if I can't find that link before we wrap up today. So for those of you that would like to connect, you'll know right where to go. Now, there's no perfect formula for networking. So I often encourage um, students when we're talking about this, that you do not have to do all the things. You just need to do the next right thing. For some of you, that might be to update your profile. For others, it might be that you just need to JCI, just check in with the people that you have. And so here, this is where you can just keep it real. Your check-ins don't, again, when I mentioned earlier, not everything has to be super formal. The just check-in page, I mean, that can be where maybe you've connected with people and now, especially with LinkedIn, how it's shifting to be a little bit more social and where it's telling you when it's someone's birthday or um, when, you know, you can, that can even be something where you can just, you know, say, hey, I saw it was your birthday today. Hope today's great. That can be your check-in. And it's a, it's a reference point where they can see you again. As you are, it might be that even through their LinkedIn page, as you're connecting and through your profile that you're seeing, oh, I recently saw you wrote an article that I read. Thanks for sharing your insights. Or I saw you in the news recently. Congratulations. Hopefully it's a positive thing, right? I recently watched your tech talk. Or for a, one strategy that I've had some students use is they will look on a company page and they will be specifically looking for the HR people or the recruiters. And they'll re then you can reach out to them and say, hi, I was reaching out and wondering what your recruiting plans are for the fall and if you plan to come to UIUC. So that immediately kind of perks up a recruiter's ears because they're like, oh wait, they, they're reaching out to me. Now again, it might not be that they're going to suddenly be talking to you, but it will help hopefully by ask, also asking the question, are we on your radar? Like, are you planning to come to UIUC? That will prompt a response from them. And again, like I mentioned before, there is fortune in follow-up. So as you are doing your networking, as you're having the information session, as you are um, going to these virtual events, making sure that you are following up with a thank you. These can be short, this does not have to be elaborate, but again, hey, I just wanted to touch base and thank you for your time today at the engineering career fair. I, you know, I'm gonna make sure I do the next steps you told me to do and I'll be in touch. Then even a few days later or a few weeks later, you have the opportunity. If they said go online and apply, well now you can, you can LinkedIn message them again. Hey, just wanted to touch base, let you know I, took, I did the things you told me to do and, and I've done those. So if there's anything additional you need from me, please don't hesitate to let me know. So those are some things you can do. Numbers one and two, I was sharing because one, it talks about hold video coffee meetings. And this is specifically for those maybe who are doing internships right now or working actively right now, thinking about how, how can we be, how can we connect with each other when we're virtual? So maybe it is that, you know, of course we're jumping on meetings or Zoom meetings all the time. We're doing that today. But maybe you reach out to a colleague and just say, hey, do you have 10 minutes where we can just chat offline or we're, let's, let's have a, a coffee meeting and grab your cup of coffee and, and do that. Or have a lunch meeting where, hey, let's have a, a lunch meeting where we're legit just going to eat our lunch and talk and, and have a moment to connect. Those things are okay. Up your texting game. This is, of course, only for those, I would say probably more again, for colleagues who you are willing, again, to share that contact information with where you could be able to um, just briefly connect with them again through another channel that's outside of email or, 
or a Zoom. And the other thing too that I think can sometimes be the next right thing when we're talking about networking is to be intentional with turning your camera on. Um, it is easy for us to jump on something and to not have to um, be stay engaged or to multitask through a, while we're listening. And that's, that is fine, but especially when we are, um, well, we are connecting with a person when we've requested their time, those informational interviews, I think it's important as long as you're comfortable and maybe you're not super comfortable, um, but that you're willing to turn the camera on as you're, as you're talking to them because it just instantly makes things more personable. Otherwise, do we have any questions? Yeah. Not more ice cream. So I don't see any coming in. I have a question. Um, I guess it's more of a broad question, but I wonder, uh, so for some majors, for example, I know you've been talking mainly about engineering, but for some majors, they're not directly correlated to a specific career path. Um, and you may not have, just like, despite, for example, like the history department having its own career services, um, it's not as straightforward as perhaps maybe other um, areas. So I'm wondering how one would go about networking um, with people in that case? So I think that one way to do that could potentially be to do that deeper dive in LinkedIn, right? Where I can start, maybe you start with U of I, you can start, you can find your major perhaps. It'll be maybe more digging a little bit. I and, and then it's really just having conversations, not limiting yourself especially if you're feeling like I'm still in the exploration phase, I haven't quite figured out what I want to do, to just start talking to everyone. Because for a history major, for example, you can do anything you want to do, really. Um, there's, there's, because it, it all goes back ultimately to your skills. And, and what skill set do you have? And so while this conversation is not about career readiness, um, one of the things that we often talk about with students is the career readiness skills. Um, there is a great, I will, I will throw the website up, it's careerservices.illinois.edu, and that, actually I just sent that to you privately, Annie, I didn't mean to do that, um, but that is something that is a great website that is campus-wide, trying to type and talk careerservices.illinois.edu. If you click on that link, it's going to take you to a website that shares what the eight career readiness competencies are. Some of those include like leadership, communication, teamwork, um, global, like I can't think of the right terminology that they use, global fluency. Um, so like if you've studied abroad, being able to talk about that experience, but all of those are additional skills that employers are looking for from a, from a fit perspective or company culture perspective that they're able to, and, and of course, then the technical skills. You've gotta be able to look at that job description and not only just focus on the technical skills, but what are the other skills they're looking for? Maybe that helps a little bit. Um, really, I mean, because there are, like you said, Annie, there are some majors that appear to be more connect the dots. Perhaps I'm here, I go here. But the reality is that a lot of it, it doesn't necessarily, while that can be true, there are still plenty of people who are like, well, yeah, that's what it says, but that's not where I want to go. Like, I don't think I want to go here to here. I want to go over here somewhere. And so that's where networking can help you try to figure out your direction. And I, Helene, you asked, would you advise to start networking early in the college career? And I would say the sooner you can start building that net, the better, right? So the sooner I can, and your network doesn't always have to be the professional people. It can be your classmates because guess what? In four years, like if you're a freshman, in four years, those people who you took classes with, 
you're all going into industry in one area or another. And so you're, that's going to also be that your friends or your colleagues and classmates turn into your professional network. So that's even where saying, and, and Annie, this might be a good example too of something to do is when you're thinking about, well, who are my friends or classmates who have done an experience this summer? They're in my major. I want to know what kind, what are, start talking to them. What did you do? Where did you go? Did you like it? What was your favorite thing about it? What was your least favorite thing about it? Start gathering that information so that that can give you an idea of if, if it's a direction that you think you might want to go. So networking actually doesn't require work experience, which is the beauty of networking. Networking, again, goes back to co asking questions, collecting information, setting up those informational interviews where I can be saying, I don't have any work experience yet. I think this is where I want to go, but I'm not sure. Can you tell me your story, right? And it can also, again, be even with maybe a classmate who you might be feeling adrift, right? I'm lost. I don't know which direction I want to go. And you might be sitting next to someone in your class who it feels as if they have a very clear vision in mind of where they want to go. They could also potentially be a great person to talk to. Why are you, why do you want to do that? What do you like best about it? Do you know someone in that field already? Because again, it's just about the networking piece is gathering information to try to figure out what you want to do. And from there then, when an employer or recruiter says, why are you interested in this job that you're trying to get to get the experience, right? <laughs> that you can say, well, I've been talking to a lot of people and based on what several of my friends have said or based on what um, several information, informational interviews that I conducted, this seems like a great fit for me based on the things that I'm learning. And that's why I'm interested in, in this position. So it gives us a better answer than just, well, I, I really need a job. So this one, this one's good. Don't ever say that. <laughs> All right. Um, if we have no other questions, we'll wrap up this presentation. Thank you, Lauren, uh, for the great work um, and for all and to all of you for joining us today. We will not be having a workshop next week because of July 4th. However, we will be having one the week after. Um, it will actually be our RP alum panel. So it's kind of related to what we talked about today uh, and putting it in practice. So look forward to the panel. Uh, you can register for it once it is up on the Research Park calendar, I think about a week from now. Um, please subscribe to our Research Park Summer Intern Newsletter. I will drop the link in the chat if you'd like to do that. And the winner of the raffle will be announced through our Instagram channel tomorrow.